Good morning, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us today for our webinar, iPad for Remote Patient Monitoring at UVA. I'm joined today by a few very special guests. First, Dr. John Michael, Director of Data Sciences at UVA Health. Second, Lindsay Koshansky, Vice President of Clinical Innovation at Locus Health. And I'm your host, Adam Mahmood, Industry Lead of Healthcare here at Jamf. A brief look at our agenda for the day. We'll give you a quick overview of Jamf in healthcare and quickly dig into iOS devices for the use case of remote patient monitoring. The bulk of the discussion today is really around UVA's story and the lessons learned on their journey uh, towards this uh, better initiative for patient care. We'll of course leave some time for Q&A at the end and please direct those questions at any time throughout the webinar through the GoToWebinar system. <clears throat> now, if you hadn't heard, HIMSS 2020, which was scheduled this week in Orlando, Florida, was canceled. This is uh, one of the largest healthcare IT conferences in the world with nearly 50,000 attendees coming year after year to learn about the latest and greatest in healthcare IT. Jamf had a huge presence planned with a large double-decker booth and multiple customer events uh, in that booth throughout the conference. Um, given the cancellation, we wanted to do what we could to translate that over to a digital experience, hence this webinar today. If you'd like to learn more, head over to jamf.it slash hymns. Now, the events that we had scheduled at HIMSS are really centered around our three focus areas around mobility in healthcare. Today, as we've already discussed, we're really going to focus in on this third area, care at home. Now, for those of you that are new to Jamf, we help organizations succeed with Apple. It's a mission we've been on for over 17 years, and we continue that focus uh, moving forward uh, as the Apple ecosystem grows and grows. Now, how has Jamf been supporting? Well, simply put, we've had mobile device management solutions for the entire Apple ecosystem throughout this time. Um, MDM for short, as it's called. Whether an org is deploying Mac or iPhone or Apple TV um, or iPad, we have solutions to help. And we've really doubled down on that Apple focus over the last year with an expansion of our product portfolio with new solutions around Mac authentication and security as well as an expansion of our MDM products themselves. Uh, today, we'll be focusing the conversation on Jamf Pro, which is our gold standard flagship product for IT professionals. Now, in the healthcare space today in the US, we have leading institutions using our products, whether these are pediatric or adult. And if you start to think through why these orgs are using our products, it comes back to a couple simple concepts. Jamf allows orgs to secure Apple devices at scale. And here you see some of the core tenets of the benefits to IT, sending out profiles that dictate how a device should work in any environment, being able to monitor wirelessly those devices and look for scenarios where they come out of compliance. And most importantly, the ability to bring those devices back into a compliant state in a very easy or automated manner. And of course, the flip side of this is what's the benefit to the user? And here we're looking for something simple. We want them to know exactly the apps and resources that they should be using and not have other distractions. So when you really put together all of these capabilities that Jamf can offer, um, alongside, of course, the Apple e ecosystem in and of itself, but probably most importantly, you fold in the right solution partners and applications and kind of ecosystem layers. This is how we can really unlock some amazing experiences in any market, including healthcare. And as we think about how we can use the Apple platform to extend care to the home, iPad is an immediate thought. It's a vehicle that is so easy to use and intuitive and users, rather, whether they're one year old or 100, can pick up a device and access it. So if the iPad presents a framework, what can Jamf do to uh, secure and deliver that experience on the iPad? So here you see Jamf Pro setting up a device for the first time. And when the user powers on this device, they just have to do a couple quick steps. Now keep in mind this user could be many different people. Maybe it's IT, maybe it's an end user, whatever. Um, however, after the device, is communicating out through the network. It talks back to Apple's automation programs, which bring that device into Jamf. And you can see just a matter of minutes, the device is customized with exactly the resources we need. 
And in this case, the most important need is the app that is driving remote patient monitoring. So with that, I'd love to invite Lindsay to share a few words about Locus Health. Lindsay? And you may need to unmute yourself if you're still on mute. There we go. Yeah. Adam, does that sound better? It sure does. Oh, great. Thanks. So thanks for having us. Um, at Locus, we, we believe that extending care into the home is a really pivotal part of how the health system can succeed and treat their patients. Um, we offer a platform that's highly configurable and tailored to any population that you have the need to serve and extend monitoring of that patient, care, education, task management, collection of surveys once they've left your uh, facility. Additionally, um, you have the ability to have that data come back in in a couple different ways. So our platform is completely hosted in AWS. We have a secure website that clinicians are able to access as well as an iOS platform um, that they can see their patient list. On the patient side, they're handed an iPad and they go home with that. And as Adam mentioned, they have multiple apps they have access to. Um, the, the priority app that they're engaging with mainly is the um, Locus app. And when they log in each day, they see a list of measurements or things to do and read that have been ordered and, and configured by their clinical team. There's prompts to remind them what to do. Um, the user experience is very simple for them. Um, and the feedback that we get from patients is that they feel really connected, that they have the information that they need, that they're able to communicate in an efficient way to their back to the health system. Um, and they feel like they have the ability to know what they should be doing post either a, a high acuity uh, visit at the hospital um, it could be for other things just like COVID, what we're experiencing right now, which we can talk more about later. Um, but the point being that we're giving them the information in a streamlined, efficient way through a tool that's intuitive so that they can communicate effectively back with their care team, but also have the information that they need at their fingertips. Um, other features about the application that are important to note is that they are able to send in secure photo and video. Um, they are able to receive educational content, and currently it translates to Spanish. We serve pediatric and adult populations um, and um, find that it is uh, adaptable to both. One of the other big parts of who and what we are is knowing that tools cannot just be plugged in at a health system and everyone crosses their fingers and hopes that it works. Um, program design and workflow optimization is very, very important to us. So our implementation team um, focuses in on how the digital tool and how this is going to affect the interaction between the clinicians and the patients. And so we do a lot of design and process improvement on the front end to make sure that the digital tool is going to be plugged into an infrastructure um, and support system that the clinicians can adapt to and the patient can adapt to, and therefore we have the communication that we aimed for in the beginning. Um, we also man the logistics um, around the solution, um, and so like Adam mentioned, we um, um, leverage JAMP to its full capability to be able to manage the devices um, when they're out in the field so that patients and the clinicians do not feel the burden of what it is to manage tools um, and man a help desk when patients have questions about the technology. Um, so from the start to the finish when we're putting in a program, we really want to make sure that it's respecting the current process um, that a health system has with their, their families and the care, current care model that they have in place, um, but also is accomplishing the goals that they set out to accomplish when they decided to put a digital tool and a care at home model in place for their patient population. Thanks for sharing, Lindsay. Now, I know a good history of Locus Health is, of course, tied to UVA Health. So Absolutely. what a great transition uh, to open up the dialogue to John Michael. Um, so, John Michael, can you give us a, some brief insight into the journey around your particular readmission program at UVA? 
Yeah, thank you so much. Um, yeah, we've we've had a, 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 a kind of a long and successful uh, relationship with with Locus Health, and they've helped us develop a, a series of programs actually, and and we've we've done and and we've done a nice mix of of tools and people and processes, and they've helped us along that whole spectrum of of, of need in, in setting up a program. And it, I guess it was about five years ago, um, they were helping us with our Medicare population in the, we had an accountable care organization. And, um, and, and it was actually doing very well for patient care, but it wasn't doing so well financially. And so the UVA um, leadership decided they would shift focus from the ACO. They, they, they dropped that and went to a employee health program. And so, and, and Locus did that shift with us. So we went from a Medicare care coordination problem to, uh, and with, with, you know, a, a fairly um, uh, elderly and, 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 and frail patient population to a fairly healthy patient population in the employee um, health plan. And, and, and so they helped us stand up the Be Well program, and that was going to require us to scale up our capability. And so we were using patient advocates to do this, this work, and we needed just, you know, for the patient panels to go from 50 patients to 150 to 200 patients. And so Locus helped us develop tools to um, to do that work, and um, and and it was it, it was very you know so successful that they decided to pivot again to the inpatient population. And this was about twenty, I guess, in twenty seventeen. You know, the uh, leadership saw that we were about two points above our peer um, our, our our peers in in hospital systems. Um, in our readmission rate in, with the general medicine population. And so Locus helped us develop a um, interactive home monitoring program to handle the patients that were being discharged from general medicine home and helped us develop the you know, overall program, but then gave us a intervention with remote home monitoring that was, that was very successful. And so, um, and so that was the uh, kind of flow of work that we've done. And now, I mean, we've, you know, Locus has helped us pivot. I mean, they have programs in pediatrics and in, in um, transplant and in other parts of the, the organization that, um, that, that have, uh, you know, been successful. But the large programs that we've done have been around these population health um, uh, patient populations and have been very successful. We we dropped um, two points absolute for, for, in our readmission rate in and have sustained that. And now that IHM program, which was focused on the general medicine floor, is now being applied to the broad um, patient population with at UVA. Awesome, awesome. And and Lindsay, any other maybe quick comments around? Uh, kind of expanding on John Michael's point of the drivers for these change, the, these types of changes? Yeah, and I, I attribute a lot of our success with UVA to the leadership and the executive sponsorship, sponsorship that we've had and the mindset that being innovative and needing to try new things um, and adapt quickly um, to the needs of uh, the healthcare landscape, but also the patient populations that present themselves. And so while, as John Michael mentioned, we were plugged in with um, some of the smaller populations that we serve in the children's hospital, we were able to scale quickly because of the champions we had in place and their ability to um, acknowledge that these tools could, um, could serve those patients' needs. So when we're talking about um, a readmission project and we're focused on patients with dynamic needs and they may have had a short hospitalization, but they also may have had a very extensive hospitalization. 
the need to transition them with a sophisticated um, plan is really necessary. And I think the dynamic approach, the multiple interventions, but the ability to be able to monitor these patients at home and recognize changes um, has been a, a big driver. Um, so I, I definitely say that clinical championship is big from the um, front lines of the physicians that have led the program all the way up to the executive level. Um, those have been um, united in wanting to serve the patients and make sure that as we face obstacles of how tools might work and the um, things that we needed to do, everyone remained agile in, in wanting to make sure we were successful with these tools. Um, lots of design work to accomplish that, um, but at the end of the day, really that united front of wanting to make this work was, mm -hmm. was a necessary objective. Got it. Um, you both touched on, on this as part of kind of the strategy at UVA, but again, this executive level sponsorship, um, mm -hmm. individuals being engaged in the um, you know, curation of the solution. Can you just expand on that a bit? Like who, who are, who's in the driver's seat there? Are these medical directors of units? Um, can you just share more? Yeah, sure. It, yeah, it was. It was our the um, the group that d developed the IHM program, the Interactive Home Monitoring, um, was led by the chairman of the general medicine department, and it was supported by my data science team, plus also the all the the the, the lead hospitalist and the leads in um, geriatrics and um, uh, individual care plans, and so and so they we actually would meet every two weeks, mm -hmm. and 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 Locus was a partner in that, and and figured out workflows. We examined the intervention arms of each of the of of the program, and actually, in real time, I mean during the during the uh, pilots, we were modifying the intervention to optimize it and. It was great to have a partner like Locus that could um, react to that and, and help us with workflows and help us with the data flows that we needed to support that. Yeah, and Adam, just to touch on that a little bit more, I think that goes back to what I spoke about in the very beginning with what um, Locus, um, we really pride ourselves on that program design um, at the beginning. And with a partner like UVA, we were able to really emphasize that. Um, but that design element is a big part of putting successful technology in place. Um, assuming that users will adopt a new technology and automatically start to use it um, really can be the downfall. Um, guiding them through shepherding that digital solution through the, the process that's been designed is a key element, I believe, as to why this particular program with so many dynamic parts has been um, has been able to be successful, but also has sustained its presence in the health system. That's true. Great. We points. have some very, we have some very, very beautiful swim lane, <laughs> uh, swim lane uh, process maps that have helped us, you know, just define who who does what when and how does the technology intervene. Absolutely. And I, I think that's just so cool because this partnership you formed and digging in around these problems uh, around this patient population obviously led to exactly what you're talking about, this robust program. And as I transition over to the next slide, an awesome product on the Locust side that you, of course, are taking out mm -hmm. to other systems. So, um, you know, either one of you, any other comments about uh, the end product that we're looking at here, uh, the solution that kind of came out of all this work you're referencing? Right, absolutely. So, um, what was key here is that this is one demo, an example of a configuration. This is actually representing a, a child who's having their intake and weight tracked in the home environment. Um, but we were able to adapt quickly. We stood this program up um, in a very short period of time, which sounds um, kind of like why would you not plan for years? But it actually worked well because everyone stayed and remained focused on the, the goal. But the technology was adapted, and, and we had a, a population that had lots of needs, COPD, heart failure, sickle cell, sepsis. Um, you know, in a gen med world, they and focused on a high-risk readmission population. They have lots of needs. So we designed the 
the data elements that they're collecting in the home environment to be really focused on what their needs would be and um, made sure that it wasn't overwhelming for them to have to interact with, but given, giving them the tools to be able to send in pictures and videos, maybe to uh, represent the symptoms that they're concerned about, um, was important. And then the education that comes in so many different ways right now in the healthcare system, through pieces of paper and links, and maybe they're getting it in their patient portal, we streamlined into one place. Um, and you see an alert me measurement there. So again, when a patient submits something, they don't have to be concerned about what to do. It's telling them exactly what to do, who to call, when, um, directing them to after hours numbers and encouraging them that they're not alone when they have a question, I think is really important. But also empowering them with their own information so they can see the trends. Something else that's important to note that UVA was a big partner on was leveraging the iPad to also download other apps. For example, Jabber. So that in the home environment, they were able to have a secure video conferencing, um, which was really key for patients who maybe didn't have a PCP established. But the program had a nurse practitioner that was there to serve them. Um, and so we were able to use additional technology to be able to provide the needed care to the patient in the home environment. And that was really because of, um, of the iPad, um, because of JAMP as the MDM and being able to configure it. Um, and support um, the patient's needs. Awesome. Yeah, having it having a, system, a platform that is this easy to use is is a is a is a big benefit for mm -hmm. our patient population because we can we can provide them uh, you know the, this this tool that they can go home with in the in the case of the newborns that's 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 a very uh, uh, it's 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 good for engagement of the patients, and it's good for the um, their you know their their feeling about their experience with the health system. Mm -hmm. Agreed, agreed, and it's so cool how you know on the jam side, sure we can make some slight tweaks to a configuration. All of the configs have the same Locus app for remote monitoring, but then maybe they have some different apps around that for that population. So kind of transitioning back to the population you're, you've really been serving, uh, John Michael, on the adult side, any comments on uh, your uh, IHM enrollment chart on the screen for the audience? Yeah, this, this shows the, the, the work that we did the, in the last fiscal year, or I mean, so last calendar year, and it, it shows you the scale that we're working at. So, you know, that's mm -hmm. 5,800 discharges, and we had, you know, about 3,500 or 3,400 that were eligible and 2,327 we enrolled and engaged. And so that's a scale of patient engagement in the post-acute world that we had not, UVA had, had, had never had that kind of success. And so it's, uh, it's, it's, been a, it's been a big deal here. That is awesome. And speaking mm -hmm. of outcomes and successes, um, a few other relevant stats to share with the audience. Um, Lindsay or John Michael, uh, some comments from your side? Yeah, I mentioned before we had we had that 2% um, absolute decline in readmissions is fantastic. And then and that that equates to a 14% relative uh, readmission decline. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, it was uh, that was a, a, a feather in our cap. <laughs> Wonderful. I think this quote from uh, Jeff Fregalis is just amazing as well. Um, the reassurance that comes when, you know, uh, you can send home a family with a solution that helps them stay engaged. Um, Lindsay, thoughts from you? Yeah, and, and that's a theme, you know, we, um, this is a, a really great quote that we um, use as our beacon. Um, and I think that UVA has a, adopted that across the enterprise. Um, in many ways, from my experience in serving them um, with the tool, um, it's a true representation of what is trying to be done with patients, that care doesn't stop when patients go home. It's actually just the beginning. Um, but giving them the tools that are um, necessary to help them be successful is also really, really important. Um, and I think when we're able to scale those solutions to serve such a dynamic program, like the one that has um, decreased readmissions, that is really key when you start to see system-wide outcomes that are meaningful um, and impactful for the population. Wonderful. If you'd like to hear a little bit more about the UVA story, specifically around neonatal care, 
actually head over to apple.com slash healthcare and you can check out the video linked here within the continue patient care at home section. So with that, we'd like to open it up to the audience for some question and answer. Uh, again, feel free to direct that into the GoToWebinar control panel uh, that you're connected to. Um, so here is a question from uh, the audience. With the push for interoperability in healthcare, where is the data in the app coming from and going to? Is there real-time exchange with an EMR or EHR? Yeah, there is. Um, yeah, thank you. That the that's a good question. The um, that's one of the things that that Locus has, has has helped us kind of mature is the data exchange between the cloud, the EMR, and our data warehouse, and and so that can give the um, care coordinator a lot of context around what's going on with this patient, and um, and also. It, 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 it enables the locus tool to be specific for the, um, the, the patient that they're, that, that we're, that we're uh, uh, providing the, the service to. Got it. And Lindsay, is that consistent at all of your clients or is it uh, an option for them as far as EHR connectivity? Yeah, integration is certainly an option, and most organizations that are getting started with a care at home program um, may not opt for integration on day one, but many of our partners are. We actually have several integration projects going on right now um, because of the question that was asked. It's important to systems. It's important that that data is coming back in. Um, and for, you know, UVA is a very mature client of ours um, in our relationship, um, so we've been able to do a lot of meaningful work. But um, the data exchanges that we have with them have just helped to um, really tell that, that story well. So definitely optional in the beginning, but um, uh, working towards that should, should be definitely a goal. Wonderful. Another question coming in. Um, can you share any just anecdotes you've heard from either staff at UVA Health, um, clinical staff, I should say, and or patients themselves just about what this experience is like? Um, yeah, I, well, I, um, you know, what the Jeff Fergalis is the, 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 the person who had the quote is, um, is, is, is such a huge fan of this, uh, technology. And, um, and, and, and I, and I think that he, well, he's, he's not the only one. I think Paul Helgerson is, has, uh, has, has complimented it from the point of view of a, of a, of a hospitalist. Being able to monitor patients that you know were having some problems and came in and 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 you know they're they're able to get them on the right track, but then that um, you know to prevent that readmission and to prevent the um, the the uh, um, or you know bad outcome, the 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 tools are 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 very useful in 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 helping kind of that post acute. Um, uh, uh, the, the, the post-acute uh, okay. scenario. Yeah. yeah. Just to add on, um, just one that happened this week, Adam, I'd like to share because I think it's, it's the, the focus on everyone's mind is how we are um, tackling this, this COVID situation and we are leveraging the solution here at UVA to support patients screened and may require monitoring at home. And one of the nurse practitioners who will be monitoring these patients and had not used the technology yet said, it's just so great we have this to provide, especially in a situation like this. Um, and so the ability to scale um, is important to the institution. Um, it's important that clinicians who are boots on the ground know that they're providing something that's meaningful to the patients. And then the patients, once they're home, know they're using something that's dependable um, and keeps them informed, but also their clinical team. Um, and most of the feedback we get are anecdotes and quotes are consistent with that theme. Got it. Yes, it's it's certainly, uh, you know, Lindsay, we've talked about this offline. It's You would never want a, a situation such as this to, um, you know, for, for some to think that uh, organizations like ours are trying to take advantage of a situation like this. Of course, that's not what it's about. Um, but how can we leverage the technology sets we have to meet the needs that are present? Um, so I think it's okay. a really uh, relevant topic and great to see that Locus and others are, are digging in to see how we can, can help. So with that, 
Thank you everyone so much for joining the webinar today. We're right at time. If you'd like to learn more about how Locus and Jamf are working together, head over to jamf.it slash Locus. And if you'd like to learn more just about Jamf Healthcare in general, head over to jamf.com slash healthcare. Thanks so much, and we'll talk to you soon.